If you've ever heard two doctors describing a medical procedure, you'll notice that they use really long, complicated words to describe even just the location of things. Why not just use terms like above and below and left and right? Well, it comes down to the fact that patients aren't always standing up and they're not always lying down. And so we need words that describe locations of things very precisely, no matter which way somebody is oriented. Let me give you an example. We'd all agree that my heart is above my stomach, right? But what if I go lie down? Suddenly, my heart isn't really above my stomach. It's sort of to the side of my stomach. No doctor or nurse is gonna get confused where the heart is versus the stomach, but when we're talking about specific arteries or veins or maybe a tumor or something like that, well, suddenly getting one of those wrong could be a big deal. In all my videos, I'm gonna be using these terms to describe the locations of things, and so it's important that we get a good foundation now. So let's jump to the whiteboard. So here we have a drawing of somebody standing in what we call anatomical position. They're standing upright with their palms forward and their arms to their side. We're gonna describe locations of things as if somebody were standing in anatomical position. So even if somebody's lying down, we still describe the location of structures based on where they would be located with the person standing up in anatomical position like this. First up, literally up, is superior and inferior. Superior just means toward the top of the body and inferior means below. Now, if somebody were lying down, for example, inferior and superior are still oriented the same as if that person were in anatomical position. So let's say we're talking about the heart and the stomach. So it doesn't matter if somebody is standing up or lying down, the heart is still superior to the stomach. Whenever you think of all these terms, think as if the person were standing in anatomical position. Up next, we have anterior and posterior. Anterior is gonna to be toward the front, or kind of toward the chest here, and posterior will be toward the back or behind the person. I kind of think of this like ante and post. If something's ante, like an anteroom, it's in the beginning, it's in front of you. And post means behind you, like a postscript, it's something that comes after. So post is behind me, ante or anterior is in front of me. Next we have medial and lateral. Lateral means toward the sides. So for example, my ears are more lateral than my nose, which is very medial. I think of laterals like a lateral in football where you throw the ball to the side. So lateral means toward the side. Your eyes are more lateral than your nose, but your mouth is more medial than your ears, for example. Up next, we have two of the most confusing ones. I find that students have a hard time with these two, and these two are proximal and distal. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. So proximal means toward the point of attachment. So let's talk about the arms first. The point of attachment of your arms is really your your shoulder, right? That's where your arms attach to the rest of your body. So if something's proximal, it means it's relatively close to that point of attachment, to the shoulder. Distal is the opposite. Distal means it's far from that point of attachment. So for example, my fingers are more distal than my elbow, or my shoulder is more proximal than my elbow, because my shoulder's closer to that point of attachment. Or if we just look at the hand, my fingers are more distal than my wrist. The same thing goes for the legs. In the legs, proximal will be closer to the point of attachment of the legs, which are the hips. And distal means far from the point of attachment. So like your feet, for example, would be very distal. Now proximal and distal are really only used for the arms or the legs or other certain tubes in the body, which we'll get into in later videos. So you wouldn't ever use proximal and distal for like the heart and the stomach because they're not part of the arms or the legs. We'll only use proximal and distal for the arms and legs right now. Up next, we have two that are describing the layers of the body. So we wouldn't use these for like heart and stomach again. We'd use these for layers of tissue. So here we have a cross section of the leg. This is a transverse cross section, which we'll learn about in the next video. And we're looking at the layers. So superficial will be the most superficial or the most toward the surface layer. Superficial means towards the surface. So your skin, for example, is gonna be the most superficial part of your body. And then deep would be the most inside part, which is usually gonna be the bones or sometimes the internal organs. So we only really use these two terms, superficial and deep, when we're talking about layers. And usually those layers kind of go in this order from superficial to deep. We've got the skin, we've got the hypodermis, which is the fat layer. We've got muscle inside of that, and then bone. And then if it's like in our skull or in our chest cavity, then it's gonna be the internal organs that are deep to those bones. Now we've got a couple more terms that are kind of repeats here. I'll use Sly here to help us understand why we have those repeat terms. Sly was my favorite Beanie Baby when I was a kid. Say hi, Sly. The first one's cranial. Cranial literally just means toward the head. For humans in anatomical position, cranial and superior are the same thing. 
They both mean this direction, which is toward the head. But for sly, that's not the case. For sly, cranial means toward the head, which would be the same as anterior. And superior would be this direction, which would not be toward its head, it's toward its back. So it's important to know some of these other terms if you're learning about other animals than just humans. Next, we have a term called caudal, which just means toward the tail or away from the head. And so for humans, caudal is downward, but for sly, caudal would be toward the tail, backward here. Two more quick terms, which are dorsal and ventral. I first learned about dorsal whenever I was looking at sharks and stuff, and they've got a dorsal fin, which is on their back. So dorsal for us, for humans, would be the same as posterior toward our back, anywhere the back is, and ventral would be anterior. For sly, it would be the opposite. Dorsal would be its backside, and ventral would be its belly side down in here. So let's recap these really quick. In anatomical position, somebody's standing straight up, palms forward, facing forward. Superior means up, and inferior means down, and for humans, cranial and caudal are the same as those two terms. If you draw a center line down the body, we've got lateral toward the side, or more medial toward that center line. For your arms and legs, we have proximal and distal. Proximal is gonna be closer to the point of attachment, which is your shoulder or your hip, and distal means moving away from the shoulder or the hip towards the fingers. We've got anterior and posterior, anterior toward the front in anatomical position, and posterior toward the back. When we're talking about layers, superficial and deep, superficial meaning toward the skin, deep meaning toward the inside or away from the skin. All right, hopefully that was helpful, and don't forget to keep learning. If you wanna know more, check out my next video on the cross-sectional planes of the body. All right. Thanks for watching. You know your directional terms now? Which way is this? Can you say superior, inferior? Can you say anterior? Can you say anterior, posterior? You got it? Maybe not.